much. Thank you. What was that kid from Stranger Things doing <laughs> performing stand-up? <laughs> I get it. I looked like Sam Smith had a baby with Mr. Bean. <laughs> I look like a real life, but somehow gayer Gumby. <laughs> I'm not gay, I like to clarify that right out of the gate. A lot of people think I'm gay and I get it because I've seen mirrors. <laughs> not, I actually think I would nail it though, if I was. <laughs> I think I'm doing kind of a good job already. I think I'm actually gayer than a lot of gay people. <laughs> I'm just not into that one thing that they're super into. <laughs> Rainbows. I just think they're kind of gay. Yeah. A lot of people accuse me of being uh, intelligent because of the way I dress, which is a form of discrimination. It's subversive. Uh, you don't realize you do it. It's a big problem. Uh, the reality is that I'm not. I don't even know my ethnicity. I asked my parents, and my dad, who was from the South, said, you're a Republican. <laughs> okay. It's news to me. Fox News. Uh, I'm sorry about that one. That was bad. I realized I was an idiot this past Christmas. I was uh, watching a movie called The Santa Claus. Do you guys remember that movie? You ever watch a movie as an adult and you realize something about it that you completely misunderstood as a kid? So I was watching The Santa Claus and there's a scene in it where uh, Tim Allen's character is in the doctor's office because his body is transforming into Santa Claus <laughs> against his will because of a contract he neither read nor signed, but he put on a jacket, so tough luck, Scott Calvin. And uh, the doctor walks up to him and he goes, I don't know what to tell you, Scott. You're as healthy as a horse. And Tim Allen's character slaps his belly and he goes, yeah, Clydesdale. But when I was a kid, I didn't know what a Clydesdale was. So I thought that Clydesdale was just something sassy you said to people. <laughs> And I thought that for years. I'd be like, Mom, I'm bored. And she would be like, go clean your room. And I'd be like, Clydesdale. <laughs> I went back to school and a buddy of mine was like, I'm gonna run all the way down the court and I'm gonna jump so high, I touched the net. I was like, yeah, Clydesdale, you are, man. <laughs> and then, around the age of 12, I started looking at girls for the first time. And I remember specifically telling my friends, I want to tell Allison how I feel, but I know if I do, she'll just say Clydesdale. <laughs> Every one of my friends was like, yeah, we can't argue with that. Um, good luck. Then I saw a Budweiser commercial with Clydesdales in them. And then this is what my brain did. My brain went, oh, Clydesdales are sarcastic horses. And I believed that for like 15 years. So I was watching Santa Claus this Christmas. It didn't come up a lot in conversations because that kind of thing doesn't. But like, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> What right do I have to get mad at people on Facebook for their horrible political opinions? You know? I think that's the moral here. I can't get on there in like full transparency and be like, actually, out of uh, 800,000 refugees let in since the attacks on 9 11, only four were arrested on suspicions of terrorism. And while no threat of terrorism should be taken lightly, maybe we shouldn't legislate according to such a small number. Also, you should know, until recently, I believe many horses had quick comebacks since. <laughs> Doing the Lord's work. <laughs> I uh, just recently finished paying my taxes, so <laughs> applause break. Uh, I had to file an extension on that bad boy, and I called my dad to complain because uh, he's conservative, and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And he was like, Elliot, if you didn't pay taxes, you wouldn't have roads. Don't you like driving on roads? And I was like, Dad, I live in Los Angeles. No. <laughs> In fact, driving on roads is probably like my third least favorite thing. <laughs> right behind third world poverty and just probably the regular kind of poverty. <laughs> How about that? And he was like, if you didn't ha pay your taxes, you wouldn't have a fire department. I was like, again, <laughs> good. <laughs> I live in a city that is perfectly designed for one third of the amount of people that live here. That means that statistically speaking, two thirds of the people in this city could burn to death and life would only get better. There'd be a lot of funerals, but like nobody would be late to them. It's a good plan.
That's true. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> Do the math. It's insane. Start lighting places on fire. Don't, I, don't edit that out. Uh, that's good. I uh, stopped drinking beer recently. Uh, yeah, because I got tired of the way it always made me feel like uh, <coughs> happy. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. It's like uh, I'm over happiness. I think I've had enough of it. It's like a gateway drug. It's like the marijuana of emotions. Because you start out and you're like, oh, I'm happy. This is great. And you're like, I wonder what fulfillment would feel like. <laughs> And then maybe if you're like friends or family, you find fulfillment. And you're like, wow, neato. I wonder what meaning would feel like. And then maybe through like God or, or giving up gluten, you find meaning. And then after that, you're like, oh, I wonder what meth would feel like. I've never done meth personally, but uh, I'm getting kind of close. To it, every anti-meth PSA gets me a little bit closer to trying it because they're all the same. Every anti-meth PSA is like, if you do meth, you know what's gonna happen. Uh, your teeth are gonna fall out. You're gonna get sores all over your body, and you're gonna age 20 years. I don't buy it. <laughs> I think one more thing happens, and I think that one more thing is awesome. <laughs> it has to be. Otherwise, that's not a drug. That's a spell from Harry Potter. <laughs> Methamphetamine. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I'm Elliot Morgan. Thank you very much. <laughs>